In the last video, I mentioned and showed these Load Pro leads. Now, the Load Pro are just the leads. They plug into any standard meter, and so the meter is not part of this, but you do need a meter that measures voltage. So really, any multimeter will do that. So the Load Pro leads let you identify bad circuits, whether it's a circuit that has corrosion, a bad switch, a corroded contact, a broken wire where it's partially broken but still making a little bit of contact and you're getting a voltage drop through it because of resistance. So this is a great tool for that. It works in places where other things don't. So let me show you what I didn't show you in the last video, how this works. This is what that looks like. This is the Load Pro. It's a test lead. It actually stays on my meter all the time. It's plugged in down here to the common and then the voltage and resistance test jacks. It's got a black and a red. And on the end of the black one, I usually have this alligator clip screwed on there. So I'll leave that on there. But underneath, it's got a regular probe just like this. And the probe has a little recess on the end of it instead of being pointy. So if you're testing something that's like a pin, you can set this on the end of the pin and it will actually just it'll sit there. It stays nicely. Anyway, remember when I was talking about pixies and the resistance? You don't want resistance in your wiring. There's resistance in all wiring, and that's why you have to size wire based on the current uh, that's flowing through it. So all wire has some resistance, but a good wire properly installed and properly sized will have very low resistance. So I've got the meter in the little Omicron symbol here, the resistance. And if we check this wire, well, if I just check here, See, I'm looking at uh, 0.2 ohms or so, and that's through the test leads themselves. So if I check this wire here, yeah, it's also, it's like zero. And the meter was switching between 0.2 and zero. So there's essentially no measurable resistance in this wire, or very little anyway. And that's what you want. Unfortunately, when you're testing things, you can't always tell if there's resistance in your wiring that you didn't plan on being there. So this is a resistor. And this particular resistor has a resistance of 9.8 kilo ohms. That's 9,800 ohms. So it's got a fair amount of resistance. If that was in my circuit somewhere because I had a bad... Uh, wire. It was broken and maybe out of the 20 strands in it, only two of them were remaining. Uh, or if I had a, a corroded connection, that would reduce the voltage flowing through it and whatever light or device is on the other end uh, will not be as bright, may not work right. If it's your electronic control module, that voltage drop could actually prevent your bus from running. So this wire here is fairly old. That connector is a little bit, it's got some surface corrosion on it. And if I check it and hold the probe against it kind of lightly, like I had a loose connection, you'll see the meter jump around a bit. The OL is out of limits or over limit. That just means that there's no connection. So if I'm touching it here, you see it's jumping all over the place and that would indicate a bad connection. So right now it's showing you know, and I'm, I am touching that. Uh, it's showing up in the mega ohm range. So there's quite a bit of resistance there. And you'll see there's corrosion on that. Now, if I dig the probe through the corrosion, now look, it's reading basically zero or almost, you know, 0.2 or down to zero, just like it would if I were testing straight across these. And that can happen. You'll get corrosion built up on your connections. Often it's the ground connection. So one of the ways you can fix these is just go around and loosen the nut or the screw and tighten it back up again. What you do is you break that little corrosion layer 
and then you tighten back up through it and get down to good metal again. And if you've got issues with circuits and stuff in your bus, the first thing I'd recommend you do is go around and check all your grounds. Loosen and tighten all the all the terminals and things like that because that little tiny layer of corrosion on there can keep a circuit from working. So how do I identify that I've got resistance in a circuit in a bus? Right here, it's easy. You know, I clip on one end and I touch the other end and I can measure the resistance. But what if I'm checking through the ground or the other end of this wire is at the back of the bus connected to the battery and the front end of the wire is up by my headlight switch. I can't get a probe on each end of that because it's gonna be, you know, 28 or 40 feet apart, depending upon the size of your bus. So instead of using the resistance range, the Load Pro lets you use voltage. So let me set this up a little bit differently. I'll be right back. All right, so now we're going to look for resistance in this wire through this little circuit using power. So this lead is connected up to my 14 volt nominal 12 volt power supply up there just to simulate being connected to the battery. So if you're checking that light circuit, one end is connected to your battery. So we'll connect that circuit here. And I've got it in the voltage range and it's measuring DC voltage. So if I touch the probe here, it would help if I turned that on. All right, I turned on my battery, my power supply. So if I touch the probe here, I'm showing 14 point, you know, basically 14 volts. If I touch the probe here on that wire, it's still 14 volts. If I touch the probe over here, on the other side of that resistance, which really would simulate a bad connection, I'm still measuring 14 volts. And the reason I'm measuring that is because I'm not really pulling any current through there. So this resistor isn't, isn't raising its little hand and saying, hey, I'm here, I'm a resistance in your circuit. So one way to do that is to pull current through it. And the way you pull current through it is to apply a load to it. So now if I am holding that on here, and I push this little red button, see how the voltage drops? Now I'm down in the millivolt range. So pushing that button applied a load because there's a load in here. It's letting current run through it and then applying a load and pulling current through this resistor. So just by pushing that button now, because right, right now, remember, it looks good, 14 volts, 14 volts, 14 volts, but I push the button and now it drops way down into the millivolt range. So that tells me that somewhere in that light circuit between the battery and the switch or whatever I'm testing up front, there's a bad connection or a broken wire or some kind of resistance, something keeping the pixies from getting through. Now let's test this wire with these somewhat corroded uh, terminal rings, ring terminals that are crimped on the ends here. So I've got this connected to the power. So this would simulate being attached to my battery or a fuse block or something. The other lead is connected to a ground. In this case, it's the other side of my power supply. And I'm going to touch the probe here to this more, see that part right there? It's kind of more corroded outside of the ring terminal, but just before the insulation here. I'm going to touch the probe there. Well, first off, let me back up. So if I touch the probe here, we've got our 14 volts. If I touch it on that corroded part, I've got 14 volts, but now let me push the button. And you see how the voltage drops? Let me do that a little bit differently. So I got my 14 volts here and I push the button and the voltage drops. And that tells me there's some kind of a resistance or a bad connection in that circuit. Let's try this through what might be a ground bolt. So I've tried to get the alligator clip to make a good connection. See, it's all shiny in there. 
So I've wound that back and forth. So here you are, you're testing, and you've got a terminal, and you touch the probe to it. I'm going to hold that on there pretty well. And I got 14.01 volts, and I push the button, and now it drops to 13.6. So that tells me, because that's pretty corroded, that this is not making a good connection. What about up on this end? I check it, and I've got, what is that? I don't know not quite 12 volts, and if I push the button, it drops way down. So anyway, handy tool. I can't get out to the bus right now because of all the snow to show you any diagnostics out there, and I can't think of anything good to test, but a handy device, it will identify problems in circuits when some of my other tools won't.